what's up everyone welcome in this new video in this beautiful weather where i can literally smell the thermals yeah there is a big pile of shit right there i don't know what's the name in english about this but uh it's called fumier in french uh so yeah <laughs> it's from the farm just right there so yeah it's nearly dead air it's there is no wind there is some good thermals so i have my uh light energy which is 189 grams ready to fly and um yeah today it's the first episode of flight talk so it's me talking while flying about a subject i want to talk about so today it's about the layups uh and oh the weight of different layups affect the flying characteristic of a glider and uh, oh can it be useful in real contest conditions or something like this so if i smell correctly <laughs> the thermal is right there or right there so i will throw and uh, let's go talk about this So, the layups. First, what is the layup? So, when you buy a glider, you have different choice most of the time. Yeah, there is the thermal. And uh, there is a standard version, a light version, and a strong version. Most of the time, as I said. What are the differences between a light, a standard, and a strong? So, obviously, the standard is the standard. So basically, all the gliders are with the same tails. Uh, they doesn't change the layup of the tails most of the time. Some manufacturers do it, but it's not often. Uh, so in the standard strong and light, but uh, they just put the lightest one uh, with the light one, the standard weight one with the standard and the heavy one with the strongs. So this is how it is most of the time. For the fuselage, it's exactly the same. No difference in layup, but most of the time. But uh, just they put the lightest with the light and the heaviest with the strongs. For the wing, there is always the same core. So it's Roacel uh, 30 kilos per square meters. Most of the time it's 30 kilos per square meters. And um, per cubic meters, sorry, not square. <laughs> um, and um, they just change the layup of the wing. So the layup is the weight of the carbon per square meters. So it's density. Um, the lights are most of the time made out of um, 26 to 30 grams carbon per square meters and uh, standards 40 grams carbon per square meter and strong 60 gram to 80 gram per square meter carbon so yeah that's the most common things so what does it change in the glider itself when it's finished when it's when it's ready to fly so the light are really light at the tips so the tail, the nose, and the wing, because the wing is lighter, so it has less uh, momentum inertia. So I don't know if it's the correct term, the correct word, but I will say it like this. So it has less momentum uh, in the wing, less momentum in the fuselage, and uh, it's angular inertia. Yeah, maybe it's this. <laughs> so I think you understood me. So it's just more nimble the light is more nimble and it's not just lighter so it performs better in calm air but it it's also more nimble and more reactive to slight movements in the air and this is why it's interesting to have a light glider it's because you will notice easier the movements in the air so the, the sync rate is a bit of a bonus then a standard one so 
a standard one compared to a strong one, uh, the strong one will be heavier in the wing compared to a standard one because the wing is made out of more carbon per square meter. So obviously it's heavier. So more uh, angular momentum, uh, angular inertia. <laughs> I think it's called like this. Maybe I'm wrong, but sorry about that. Um, so it's, it could be interesting to have more inertia in the wing because you want more stability. But sometimes it's better to have less inertia and more ballast in the body of the, of the glider because you want to keep it nimble and at the same time have the good weight of a heavy glider. So then why not to ballast a light? Because a light is weaker. It's not as strong as a standard or a strong glider because there is less carbon in the wing. So yeah, don't over ballast a, a light glider. It will not be good. <laughs> So, yeah, basically, me, I was playing a lot with uh, flying my strong empty or flying my standard with a lot of ballast because um, sometimes I want the nimbleness of, uh, you can see there, the little things in the air moving with the thermal, getting sucked by the thermal. So I'm following them. And it should be right there. So. Yeah, basically, the sometime I was playing, as I said, with um, standard wing with more ballast because I want the nimbleness of the glider because the thermal were a bit weak and uh, it, it was needed to ballast the glider because of the wind. So I want to read my glider easily and I want still to come back from downwind. So a standard ballasted was the best combo to, to fly this weather. But sometimes it's not really windy, but it's really turbulent and your glider needs stability. And to be stable, the glider needs weight in the extremities. So in the wing, the tail, the nose. And then a strong glider is perfect and you don't need to ballast it because uh, it's not needed to come back from downwind. So a strong glider is perfect with no ballast. So you can fly lighter than with a standard glider who, who need uh, more ballast be, to, to be stable and uh, so you can climb faster in thermals because you are lighter but more stable with a strong glider. So yeah, that was a bit my moment of share about this. So I hope you liked it. I hope you like this concept of uh, flight talks. Uh, I, think, uh, I think it's quite great I hope you liked it and uh, I had a good training session flying my energy light so yeah that's pretty much it thank you a lot for watching and see you in my next video bye